for a young woman who lives in an area where her friends are concerned about their appearance, and she says to her mom, or let's assume, let's assume whatever, she's 20 years old, and she says, I'm gonna go, go to the store, to the sun tanning booth to get sun tanned, then I'm going to the laser hair removal place, and then I'm um, getting breast surgery to get implants, and I'm gonna get some Botox. Mm. Um, uh, <laughs> which, are, which are all re, you know, normal things in many areas. So again, sun tanning, indoor sun tanning, laser hair removal, Botox, and breast implants, those four. What are your thoughts? Okay. She if needs was, a brain. Yes. <laughs> but, and and not, not from a self-esteem point. I've, that's obvious that yes. that's the number one thing, but in terms of the effect on their health, how it is. Oh, this? absolutely. The, those, first of all, those breast implants, that's highway to hell. So they will eventually start, uh, first they will get all black by bacteria and mold. Everything grows on it because, you know, anything foreign in your body will be attacked. And uh, then they will start to um, erupt. So the, the, the whatever silicone or sealing that's inside will eventually go into your system and your lymph and be traveling through your body over and over. It, that's, that's hell. And I've seen, we've seen so many people that have uh, been through it and, you know, why? And why do it when you have mastectomy? Because mastectomy, you railroad, they put the enlarger into you and then a few weeks later, you're supposed to come in and get your implants and your hunky doodle, like you never had cancer and you look the same. No, you're not, you're not the same. And there are other methods that can be done after mastectomy that is so much better. Some women decide not to do anything. And uh, I have a bra that uh, for mastectomy, for example, that we put woolen implants in instead of any, anything with plastic and uh, woolen, woolen fill. And so some of our guests that decided not to do that, they, they will tell you, I have boobs today. And, you know, so that's, <laughs> you can decide. Or others actually now, um, it's FDA hasn't approved it yet, that you can take your own fat and you can uh, spin and separate fat and stem cells and then put it back in. There already is where you can take fat and muscles and put it in. It's, it's a big deal. So there's much, easier things coming in future, we hope. So um, those, you know, that's, and of course, Botox is uh, carnivore. It's carnivore that you put into your body. It's, you know. Somebody's it's body. Somebody's body, really. And <laughs> so that should stop you. And there are other methods. Cadaver? Cadaver. Yeah, it's my Swedish. <laughs> that yeah, that makes a difference. It comes from rats. Comes from, yeah. Yeah. I think, I think the larger issue here is what it's doing to the mental health of this, these young yes. girls. Yes. It's, it's, it's a reflection of the fact that the, our philosophy, our modern philosophy, which is being distributed around the planet, is the more you consume, the happier you become. Mm -hmm. The more you consume, the fatter you become, and the more waste you produce. Um, the, to support that philosophy, we, this over-consumptive society of ours, we have television. Every seven minutes on American television, we're told that we're hungry, we're thirsty, we're too fat, we're sexually frustrated, and we need a new car. So what this is doing to our, to our kids, they're yes. just a, a bundle of wants mm -hmm. instead of what we need. And it's going to be a, take a lot of education to, to get grips, to get to grips with this. And Huge. We pharmaceutical drugs, what else we yeah. <laughs> we're, we're all persuaded we're ordinary, whereas the people on the other side of the screen <laughs> yeah. are super. And to become super like them, we've got to use an underarm deodorant or a shaver or something to get like these fa famous people over there are super beautiful, super handsome, super basketball players, super this, super that, and we're ordinary, we're only fit to go out and buy their crap. That's okay. If we you could get more it? of our young people to conferences like this and get them involved in saving the planet and protecting our health, they would have meaning. And when you have meaning, you don't have to concentrate on the surface all the yeah. time. Maybe right. we've got to get more famous people to conferences like this as well, so that when they get approached, they say, no, I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. Or they say, 
I'm going to be a role model. I can't think of, you know, all of this stuff that's Monsanto, Dow Chemical, all the PR stuff we started to talk about at the beginning started with Hollywood. Life magazine used yeah. to be a humor magazine. Hollywood got its hands on it somehow, and it became a PR magazine, you know, with these guys the young stars going out with each other in the 30s when they weren't dating at all, of course. It was all make-believe junk and all the magazines became, and all of a sudden somebody figured out if we do this with our food, our pharmaceuticals, all of this stuff, we make this make-believe PR world out there that everybody else thinks is real. And we don't sit here and say, as I like to say, holy shit, it's not real. You know, yeah. we're real, they're not real. And so when it starts to happen in our politics, you know, we go, wow, this is refreshing, you know, and hopefully it will continue to happen. And I think it starts, you know, with the role models that we have. We can get anybody we want at the conferences, but before that, they're watching television. We got to get our role models to be top notch, not to be fat cats, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But I, I think the whole idea of having celebrities that people worship and emulate and try to become like them, I think, I agree. I think that that whole that whole philosophy is toxic because yeah. the celebrities are manufactured. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a PR exercise. Mm -hmm. You know, their pictures are all photoshopped so they look perfect. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a fiction that mm -hmm. it's creating to sell magazines and sell products. It's mm -hmm. not real. Mm -hmm. I think this celebrity culture and having kids, you know, want to be like this celebrity and following the celebrity and following the tweets of the celebrity, I think it's just all complete bullshit. Mm -hmm. It's just a distraction. It's a distraction so they won't actually start changing the world that they right. live in and making it a better place. So yeah. I think That's that they, I think people should celebrate their individuality and, mm -hmm. and that their lives, their own lives with their friends and their family and their, their work, their schoolwork, that's what's important. Yeah. Celebrities are totally unimportant. Celebrity is bullshit culture. No. So I think that, you know, I'm, I'm for uh, people becoming the heroes of their own lives and not having it be off there that they're aspiring to, which is a very... Right. Maybe uh, I should have said leaders. Leaders. Well, <laughs> leaders is good. And there are some young people that are leading. And I think mm. there's lots of... I agree with you on leaders. I think leading... Is, yeah, okay, <laughs> hooray, we all agree about that one. <laughs>